I thought I knew everything. I thought I was this Christian and I knew everything and learned from so many different people. And when I came here and I got the opportunity to come in and, and just learn from God and, and learn from the people that are willing to teach us as well, it brought a new revelation to me. It brought something to me that um, is hard to describe, but God came closer to me. I put up my hand into the Holy of Holies how many times? And I never really experienced what I should have. And this is what has um, been my, can I say, my food for this whole year that has brought it into me and that I've realized that God has been there all the time. I've just never really allowed him to come and do what he wanted to do for me. I've always put the question, Lord, do this for me. And then I'll stand back. And when it doesn't get answered immediately, I already look for the next answer or the next question. And this has come, I've come to realize that. And it's given me so much more enlightenment into what God's powers are and what God's love is. And above all, what God's grace is for everybody. I actually formed a bond with everybody in the class. I, I think it was, you know, it was a very interactive type of class. And, and just the ability to sit there and also give your commentary to the students or even to the lecturer and adding on to what they say. It made it so homely and so easy to learn what the matter of the subject was. And that, that I really enjoyed. It was great. Um, the bonds, I'll never forget them. The faces, I'm a face man. I remember a face, not a name so easily, but the faces will, will be like, you know, when you take a negative of a photograph, that black and white, that picture will be in my mind forever. I've always believed since I met the Lord that they are speaking in tongues and that sort of stuff. I, I personally believe that and I know it's a language between yourself and God. But mine used to be just three little words that I used to utter over and over and over again. And the last couple of years, I would like to think, you know, is this really my God language? Is this really me speaking to God? Who would listen to three words over and over and over again? And then I realized while we were praying and while we were talking about all of this sort of stuff, I realized that... Um, God had more for me. Mm. It wasn't just these three words. And I just relaxed in my prayer because I always used to ask God, I said, God, do you understand me? And you know, I don't understand what I'm saying. And then God just relied, or, or, or let's put it this way, God put those answers into my mind that night we were praying there. And he said to me that there's no way that anybody will understand the language that you and I are talking. There's no way. And then it automatically began. And now I speak in tongues it says if I've got five, six, seven different languages mixed in and all that sort of stuff. But it's so beautiful knowing that I can come to my Lord and I can put my hand up and I can speak in his language. I don't have to understand what he's trying to say to me. I don't have to think of what I want to say to him. It flows automatically. It's like a tap that just opens and it just flows. Right. Good evening. I am Peter Jordan. And Eric asked me to open with scripture. When he spoke to me this afternoon, I immediately asked Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what do you want to say to this congregation? We are here together to have communion with God, a relationship with him. And the scripture that came up is 2 Timothy 2, verse 1 and verse 2. And I'm going to read out of the Amplified. And we're going to ponder on some of these things that Paul is saying here. It is important to know that we are blessed. Blessed just to be here. Blessed to have life in us. There's many people out there with COVID that is struggling, but we are fortunate. We are blessed. We're sitting in heavenly places because of what Jesus did. Now, verse one says, so you, my son, be strong. Now, Paul was writing here to Timothy, who was the head of the Ephesus church at this point in time. But Paul was in prison already. When he wrote this, he said, my son, be strong. 
be strong, spiritually strong, physically strong, but also in your soul and your mind. He was writing from the prison and encouraging Timothy to say, Timothy, I want you to be strong. The Amplified said this strong means strengthened inwardly. How do I get strength on my inner being? Is spending time in the word. Spending time on my knees, having a relationship with Jesus. That's why I say, in the grace, the spiritual blessing that is to be found only in Christ Jesus. Only in Christ Jesus, not in the world, not in your work area, not in your family area. But inwardly in Christ. It means that we are entangled. Me and Jesus is entangled. My words is his words. My voice is his voice. Because of grace. The original term for grace is charis which means is favor with God. Paul says, Paul, Timothy, you have favor with God. In Christ, we are sitting in heavenly places. It actually means that while he is sitting at the right hand of God, the Father, we are also sitting there because we are in him. We are in him and he is in us. If I don't have a relationship with him, I can't be in him. His Holy Spirit living in me will strengthen me, will encourage me, will pick me up when I'm down. It means that I need to do something and strengthen myself. Speak to your soul when you're down. David says, why are you down in my, in, me, in my inward soul? Why? Because Jesus is here. And then he says in verse 2, and the instruction which I have heard, be strong in the instruction that you've heard from me. What is the instruction for each one of us? What is your purpose? Why are you here? What is your purpose in life? What is the instruction that you've got from God? Are you living that instruction? Are you living what your calling is? Or are you just here in this world, going on from one day to the next, to the next, to the next, and don't care about why am I here on earth? He says, be strong, and in the instruction which you have heard from me, along with many witnesses. Okay? Now he's giving Timothy an instruction. He says, I've got the instruction from God. You've got the calling in your life. Now, Timothy, I want you, I want you to transmit and, trans and entrust as a deposit to reliable men. Timothy, what you've got from God, don't hold it for yourself. Don't keep it for your inner room. Transmit it to others. If we don't transmit, you will become fat in a nest. If you don't open the tap, you can't have something new in. What is the instruction from God to each one of us? Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. Two thirds of God's name is go. 
God, G O D. Two thirds of his name says go. <laughs> Peter, go <laughs> and make disciples. Okay, baptize them and teach them. And this is exactly what he says to Paul, to, to, to Timothy. He says, you, we, you found this along with many witnesses, transmit and entrust it as a deposit to reliable and faithful men who will be competent. Who's not faithful? Who is not faithful? Yeah, I'm talking to you. We lack faith sometimes, but we have the faith of God in us, which means we are faithful. <laughs> you don't realize it this evening, but God is actually saying to you for now that this evening, I entrust you. I will make you an enabler to go to baptize, to teach, because you can't keep it in for yourself. You will get stagnated. Give it to reliable people. Give it to those who are faithful, who will be competent and qualified to teach others also. Many of you completed the first year last year. Many. And we are so proud of you. <laughs> You've made it the first year. Now the second year is coming. The advance is coming. The Lord God said, enough is not enough. I've got something more for you. I want you to advance to the next level. I will enable you. I trust you so that you can take this message into your own house. Make a difference in your own house. From your house, make a difference in your workplace. From your workplace, make a difference in your area, your region. Go and change the world is the message. But be strong. Be strong in the Lord, not in your own strength. And do the work that you are called for. Heavenly Father, thank you for your purpose in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for Holy Spirit who dwells in us. I pray, Lord, that this evening that you will start and continue working in us so that we will go and change the world outside there. Thank you, Lord for your blessings in Christ, in the heavenly realm. All the blessings, Lord, is within reach. We just need to contact you and touch your garment so that your blessings may flow through me into others so that they may know who you are. Thank you, Lord, for every student that's going to enroll this year. I ask, Lord, that your wisdom, your Holy Spirit wisdom, will guide us in this year so that we can advance in your ministry to the glory of the Father, to the glory of the Son. And thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Dr. Derek Bapp. Uh, he completed his doctorate last year, and we're so proud of you, Derek.
Doctor, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor Peter. Method in my madness. That's the type of teachings you will receive in class. That's the method we use for teaching. It comes out of his heart. Every lecturer that has been brought through, every lecturer that is here tonight, every lecturer that we are cultivating has exactly that same heart. Thank you, Pastor Peter. Pastor Yomon, it gives us great pleasure to invite you to come and share a couple of words with us. And we want to thank you for the honor that you've given us that this Bible school may be founded in your church. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Dr. Derek. Um, hello, everybody. It's wonderful to see so many faces. I'm really excited about this year. And then secondly, I want to say welcome to all those watching via live stream. I know there's many of you that's joining in. So I just want to say welcome. Glad to have you guys with us. And we pray that many of you will feel the unction and the strength and the energy for this year to step in and jump in and join in as well with the rest of the classes and the first year, second years. Uh, many of you might have done a couple of years already and you want to join in. Hopefully we can sort that out as well and support you and help you. But um, yes, from my side, I said to Pastor Derek, I would only be able to be here for a short while tonight, but I said I'm going to try my best to be here. So I'm glad to be here. Um, I'm glad to see you all. I'm glad to say welcome. Um, you have to start somewhere. And I know after school, you know, the Lord spoke to me and said, this is what you need to do. And I went to Bible school. And when I started, it's as if um, the words come back to my mind the, this afternoon where the one pastor spoke to me once. I said, you know, you just have to start somewhere, like I said earlier. And he used the example and he said, a car cannot turn if it's not moving. So for some reason, we have to get moving. And when we get moving, the Lord will show us the direction we need to take, the decisions we need to make. And uh, that's what basically helped us to start this ministry and be here. And I'm glad that our, our paths could, could get into the same lane and that we can do this together and, and uh, equip people to make a difference in the kingdom of God. That is our goal. That is our vision. And because we believe, we want to influence others who believe with us. And uh, I'm glad you were taking that step today to say, hey, listen, I'm on the bus. I'm with you guys on the bus. I'm going to jump on the bus. And wherever we are heading, we're going to do it together. So I want to say I'm really glad to have you here with us. We hope you have a wonderful year with Dr. Derek and the rest of the team. And uh, we can't wait to see your faces. Amen. And hand out those certificates at the end of the year. Uh, I know you're all excited to have that. And uh, we are really proud of everyone that's part of the team, all those who have made the effort to be here, and all those who've been giving the classes throughout the whole year. They've been faithful, they've been committed, and that's why we see so many more faces here today. So I want to say I'm extremely proud of everyone. Um, I'm thankful to everyone that's been putting in a lot of hours, a lot of time. We love you, we appreciate you, and hopefully this Bible school can grow, that we have many more Bible schools, amen, uh, in many different areas. But I know that the Lord is busy doing something great, and I want to say welcome. Glad you are here. All those watching, please join in. Um, become part of the classes and make sure to take that step of faith, as Pastor Peter also said. Amen. I've been blessed. I uh, hope you enjoy the night. Thank you, Pastor, for all your hard work. We appreciate you. Anthony, Ami, we love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Pastor. It's an honor to serve you Yeah. Great stuff, guys. Everybody outside there, new students, possible students, students that are here to enroll, thank you very much. It's awesome to see so many new faces. And outside there, I sincerely hope there are many more. Um, while we are going about this, um, Pastor Dua just asked me if you can, just on your, uh, uh, where you're watching it, just give a message there, your name, and you're watching from wherever. And if you need more information, leave your email address so that we can mail all this information to you as well, including the, uh, um, the documents that you need to enroll as well. There's a couple of documents that need to be filled in. So to kick off, we're going to be not as, as a full class. Um, I normally preach for three hours, but I'm going to cut it down to two and a half or maybe two hours and 50, 55 minutes. How's that? All right. <laughs> cool. Great stuff. Guys, as, as 
things we're going through this year, we've come through a rough time. We've come through um, a time period when we weren't allowed to run into classes. We come through times where we actually sat in class, but we felt far from one another. We even went so far as we had our own little towels that we would put over the table so that we wouldn't leave germs behind and we could take everything home with us. <laughs> but the time period that we came through, I believe, I believe with my whole heart that it has just made us so much more stronger and, and so much more determined to get God's word out. And, I, and, and, and it's just enriching to see the amount of people that I've asked to assist us as lecturers that have put up their hands and said, not only one subject, some are two. Uh, I want two. I don't want one. I want two. And they're still doing classes themselves. And that's what makes it so awesome. So in, in this whole time that we've been together, um, just explaining what we are quickly to you guys is, we are um, Heritage of Faith Bible Institute, and we're running under Pastor Yamon from Cornerstone Ministries. So we've actually called ourselves uh, Heritage of Faith Cornerstone uh, Church uh, Institute, meaning that we are doing Heritage of Faith manuals, we're doing the lectures, we're doing the material, but we are still under the church, and we report directly to Pastor Yamon. And that's what makes it so awesome is and that's how every other Bible school is as well. It's not a private entity. It's, it's a non-profit organization that we actually do this as well. And the main thing that why we do these things is we've obviously got missions, we've got visions, and we've got all of these nice little things put together. So I'm just going to run through them first before we get into what it is all about, what subjects we're going to be doing. But I'm only going to be speaking to the first year's on the subjects that they're going to be doing. Why are we going to do that? Second, third, and fourth years, I hope you know what you're doing. <laughs> and, and they are the ones that are going to be here to just give you more coaching and help you. And many of them are the lecturers as well. So I'm going to kick off and I'm going to read to you guys our first mission statement that it comes through. And it says, our purpose of Heritage of Faith Bible Institute is to touch, to teach, to train students to be truly dedicated New Testament Christians, as well as individuals of positive influence in their families and communities, exactly like Pastor Peter was saying. Where do we start? Repair myself into my family from there, it starts spreading out. It must become like a wildfire. And that's what it's all about. The mission that we have is prompting relevant education for life. This education that we're promising to give you is for life. You know, I studied say, safety management. And where am I today? <laughs> I'm in God's hands. I'm in God's kingdom. I'm in God's teaching. So, yes, it was relevant at the time to bring me to where I am now. But this teaching that I have that I'm giving, that I'm sharing, that I'm, um, how can I say, that's bubbling out of me, is that I'm going to be doing forever until God comes to fetch me. So if I come in here with a walking stick or even a wheelchair, or <laughs> I hope hospital beds have got wheels on because I'm going to be here. <laughs> that's what it's all about. That's getting education, getting teaching, getting something that's necessary for the rest of your life. This is what we're doing here. Our vision is to educate and equip believers in excellence to become effective in their societies, their church, through the relevant education practice, practices. In other words, this is not just for this church. This is for the church of God. So that's why we invite students from outside as well, so that He's not only an influence in his family, but he's an influence in his community. Step by step, you can go through this whole education program and become involved, fixed in the kingdom of God and become involved the way God wanted you to be. Because that's the reason why you're sitting here as well today, is that God has given you the necessary unctioning. If I may say so, he's given you the hipstoiki to be here. And that is what it's all about, is doing what God has got planned for you. And so doing, we have the revelation 
of every step we go through, God reveals more and more to us through the time period that we go through. And you can ask the, the, the lecturers that we've been using before, when do they learn the most? When they're teaching you. And that's what makes it so lacquer. There's no nicer word than lacquer. Eh? No. So this is what God is doing to us. And God is giving this to us because he is equi equipping us and he's giving us this life. And then our uh, assignment is to, to promote a life for God. That's our assignment is to promote a life for God in everybody that we come into contact with. Every sing single person that we come into contact with needs something from me. And God has given me the ability to give it to him. And exactly the same as each and every one of you. Each and every new student, your future is somebody else's life being advanced. That's your future. And that is what God wants us to do. Exactly the same as Pastor Peter was giving us teaching this morning, or this evening, is exactly the same quality of teaching you will receive in that classroom. Exactly the same. Because that is where we have been. We also sat in those desks. We also wrote those same tests. We also wrote those exams. But our education hasn't stopped there. We're in a world of learning, and we go through it all the time. Great stuff. We have a, a statement of faith. I'm quickly going to read it to you. It's only 24 points. Now, I'm only going to give you a few of them. The first one I want to give to you is we serve a one true God. And everything that we do is biblically founded. And this comes out of Luke 3 verse 33 and also Isaiah 43 verse 11. So if you write those down, you can go and test me. It's written in your word. All right. Whether it's in Afrikaans, whether it's in English, Koza, Zulu, whatever other language, it's written there. And then secondly, well, not secondly, the sixth point I want to say, we become new in Christ. We become new creations. And that's one of the subjects we do. We do a subject called new creation realities. And we teach you in that lesson, what does it mean to be a new creation. How do you become a new creation? Is for the, the material that we teach you. The first year that we do all these teachings, I'm actually jumping ahead, actually starts at helping yourself, getting you into the position that you know who you are in Christ. And then another point I want to share with you is we also believe in the baptism of Holy Spirit. We believe in that. We believe in workings of Holy Spirit. And we believe that Holy Spirit is the giver of all, all knowledge. Uh, not knowledge. What is it? Knowledge and? Wisdom. Wisdom. <laughs> she said she'd never forget that. <laughs> so that is what Holy Spirit gives us. Because why? Jesus said to us. And, and this is so awesome, so lovable, so part of my passion. That Jesus says to me, he says, Derek, it's advantageous to you that I go away. And I'm saying, but why, Lord? And he's saying back to me, he says, so that I can send you the comforter who will give you all the necessary knowledge. No, all the necessary wisdom. Here's the knowledge. Here's the knowledge. Inside, yeah. But this is where the wisdom lays. And that is what Jesus says to us. That's why I used my name in there because he said it to me. And he's saying it to you guys as well. Great. So our orientation statement reads like this. At Heritage's, Heritage of Faith, Bible Institute, HFBI, as we commonly know, students will receive some of the finest Bible teachings and practical ministries instruction available. Be prepared to receive this. Be prepared to have your socks blown off, is what we're saying here. And then it says, the main object of this institute is to bring the students into a deeper relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. A deeper relationship. When I was youngster, when I was on the dirt road, I didn't ride a four by four then. I walked it. <laughs> but what I was, when I was at that stage, I always used to say, I'm a Christian. I know Jesus, that makes me a Christian. But was I in relationship with him? No. 
I only got into a relationship with Jesus Christ the day that I put my hand into the Holy of Holies. Only that day did I receive him as my salvator. But above all, as my educator, as my comforter, as my wisdom giver, and all those things that put together is what he's promised me. But I thought I knew him. I didn't. I got to know him. I say to the students as well on the very first evening, so you new students, I'm running ahead. You're going to hear me say this again. I'm not here to teach you how to read your Bible. Anybody can teach you that. You can go onto the website and you can go and ask um, how to read the Bible in one year. They give you a whole program. You must read James 12 and Corinthians 1 and Genesis 5. You must read all of these today. Tomorrow they say, beep, beep. You must read this and you must read that. But what are you doing? I'm telling you, you're reading a storybook. But if you start reading, as Vernon says, with new eyes, you start seeing the kingdom of God. You get revealed certain things that you don't find when you just read it. If you want to read a storybook, come to me. I've still got Macbeth in my bookshelf. I'll give you that. That's a nice storybook to read. All right. Part of my school education. So that shows how long ago it was. Eh? Macbeth, it was still written in ink and the ink was still wet in my book. <laughs> All right. So that is what we are doing here as well. And then one of the, the major benefits of being a student in the Institute is the fellowship and the lasting relationship you build with each and every other student around you. You know, as, as you heard that, did you see that handsome guy that was on the screen there? Yes, he was well shaved and he was, hey, I'm a mooi okie day. That was also quite a while ago. But you hear what I said there? I said there that I have become part of a family. I'm a face person. I'll see your face. I'll even add names to it. And if it's not your name, just put up your name and say, I'm not Kwesi, I'm Pity. All right. <laughs> but you hear what I'm saying to you? Is, I'm saying to you that we become a family. Just look at the old students that are here. Not only are they family by blood connections, but family by Jesus Christ. And that's what it is all about. We are a family here at Cornerstone Ministries. Cornerstone Church Middleburg is a massive family. And I sincerely hope all the other churches are like it as well, so that we can build upon these things. Because God is our Father in heaven. That means he's the head of my family. Hmm? That's why he calls himself Father. You hear what I'm saying to you? And that's the type of things that we're looking forward to. So great stuff. I'm going to just close off. No, I'm not going to close off with that. I'm going to go over to the differences in the years that we're going to be doing and all that. But I'm going to spend, as I said before, I'm going to spend a lot of more time on the first year students. Why am I going to do that? Is so that you can have an expectation when you come here. There are a lot of things that we're going to teach you. We're not only going to teach you who you are, what you are doing here, the questions that Pastor Peter asked. We're going to teach you how to receive those questions and how to get to the point where those questions need to be answered in your life. Like I said, I'm not going to teach you to read your Bible. I'm going to teach you about the author of that word. That author is here tonight. And I believe with my whole heart that I carry that author around with me because I know Holy Spirit has his indwelling within me. And so doing, does he promise that to each and every one of us? So I'm going to kick off with the first year students. And there's a couple of things that we're going to talk about is the, 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 the lecture material that we get, what we're going to be taught. But then we're going to talk about a couple of the rules quickly as well. We need to do that. Um, I believe that God is not a, a, a God of chaos. He knows order. He created order. And he wants order as well. And that is what we actually strive to become as well in our family as well. That the order that we live by is the order of Jesus Christ. Meaning, when he taught his disciples, 
How did he teach his disciples? What happened to his disciples after he's left? All those little things. How did this church start? All those things are things that Jesus Christ left behind. And that is what we build into our orders as well. All right. So I'm going to kick off quickly with the information. And I've, I've, I've covered quite a lot about what we are, what you can expect. But in the first year, we have six cycles. Now, when we talk about six cycles, there's 12 subjects. It's a, fi a five-week cycle. A five-week, yeah, a cycle is of five weeks long. And after that five weeks, well, that fifth week, you physically write an exam of that subject. You pass that exam, you hand your assignment in, you pass that assignment, and you get a mark for that subject. You've passed it. And then you go on. In the second year, you go on and you add on to the first year. Because your first year is basic Bible. It's, um, I wouldn't say very basic. It gives you a lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge that a lot of people have never known, even though they've been in church for 50, 50, 50 years. All right? And they suddenly start realizing these things. The light physically goes on. Have you seen those cartoons when the guy gets an idea and ding, the light comes on? Exactly the same. All right. So in the second year, those subjects that you do in first year are built upon. All right. So like, for instance, prayer is one of the subjects that we cover as well. And it's called in, 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 in the first year, it's the principles of prayer one. And in that, that is when I gave that testimony there as well. It was in 2014 when I done mine. In the first year, you get taught how to do it, when to do it, what to do, and all that sort of stuff. But in the second year, you get taught, why do you do it when? When do you do it? Is it the right time to do it? Is this the right thing? So it builds on onto the first year. So in other words, first year, basic Bible. Second year, as Pastor Peter also said, advanced Bible. So now we've got that. We've got the foundations pointed out. We've got the foundations set, and they are cast in stone. The foundation is done. The cornerstone is laid. And then we build upon that. All right. So the subjects we're going to have, firstly, foundations of faith. Apparently, that's my favorite. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Second, we have a new creation realities. I spoke about that as well. So in the first two subjects that are five weeks long, one is on a Monday evening, one is, it is Monday evening, is that cool? Yeah, Mondays and Wednesdays is the first years. So on Monday, you're going to be running Foundations of Faith. Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes. Apologies. Set it right. People at home, set it right. It is on Tuesdays and Thursdays that you're going to be running. So Tuesday, you're going to be running Foundations of Faith. And on Thursday, you're going to be running New Creation Realities. At the end of those five weeks, you've done two exams. You've done two tests. And you've done two assignments. So if you don't know who you are in the kingdom of God, you weren't in class. <laughs> You're allowed to laugh. <laughs> Great stuff. So that's the first two that you do. Then we do a subject like righteousness, principles of prayer, person of Holy Spirit. That's an awesome subject. Developing a godly character. I've learned who I was in new creation realities. I've learned all these things. And now I can put it to together again and I can start developing my godly character. Why? Genesis 1.26 says, let us create man in our own image. So that's God's image. I can create myself and I can work towards that because that is what God said he wanted to do. All right. And we carry on. Then it says, um, developing God's character, integrity of God's word. That's also um, a very strong subject. That, that helps you when somebody at work says to you, but you know, you learning the Bible, you must tell me about this. Is the Bible really true? Can we believe this? And you can say to him, yes, I'm learning this. And this and this and this and this and this and this is all the reasons why. That's where you learn that from. 
All right. Then you carry on and you go to principles of living by faith, power in the blood of Jesus. Awesome, awesome, awesome. If you ever see the movie, um, uh, Matthew, what's it? Matthew's story? Matthew's. Um, but it's about Jesus being crucified and all that. And you see him in the end with all that blood, passion, passion of the Christ. Where am I coming with Matthew's? But all right. <laughs> the passion of the Christ. You physically see him in that state of a now. In that state of bodily going to die. And that opens my eyes. That opened a lot of people's eyes. Who watched that movie and didn't cry? I don't see any hands. <laughs> that movie is about the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And that's what we learn there. That miracle, and, and the book that you read is a scarlet, the, the miracle of the scarlet thread. It's such an awesome book. Do it, do it, do it, do it. All right. And then Old Testament men of faith, Pastor Peter's passion. He will tell you about those old topies, eh? and he's going to explain to you everything. Eh? All right, great stuff. And then principles of healing, very important in this year. Very important. To you guys at home, the principles of prayer and the principles of healing are one in the same subject. But you can be for sure these are something that teaches you a new page. You're going to have a revelation in this time period. All right, and then biblical prosperity. I say that's my favorite, but I believe the people say it's not my favorite. <laughs> All right. But anyway, those are the 12 subjects that you run through. Now, I'm just going to talk to us about the finances and how it works and the cost of living or the cost of uh, getting an education in the kingdom of God. But there she's going to talk about a strange thing. She's going to talk about a six pack and a 12 pack. All right. It's not a six pack that you used to buy many years ago. All right, it's a six pack of the godly word. <laughs> All right, great stuff. This is the difference between the two. A six pack literally means that you only do six subjects in that specific year. So you've got the availability then to do your first year within two years. That is adapted to people that cannot be out of home twice a week. Young children, um, I've heard many excuses that is used for that. All right. But <laughs> what it means is that this is offered in the evenings so that you can advance yourself. And it doesn't mean that you've got to literally take your family and push them aside. No, you've got to do this while you are in your family. So that is why the six pack is there. Excuse me. You pay your, your uh, um, tuition fees, your, um, what do you call it? registration fees you pay that and then you pay half of the full amount over the six subjects but you still do that over the entire year you do the first subject of every uh, cycle you do that then next year you do the second subject of that cycle you just fall into a new class there are students here that have done it that way and yes it does work it works for students, like, for instance, my sister here, she done, uh, or is busy with her engineering degree and all that sort of stuff as well, while she's doing Bible school. So it can be done. It's not a question of that you can just do a chop chop and get it over and done with. You can do it in your normal day to day life as well. And that's what makes it so um, enjoyable, so powerful behind it all as well. You're learning while you're still in your daily environment as well. All right. And then the 12 pack obviously means you do all 12 subjects at the same time. Um, <laughs> you said to me, I'm not allowed to say it, but if you don't see me tomorrow, that's because I'm wearing dark glasses. She's going to beat me up. I'm going to say it. <laughs> I prefer the 12 pack. Why do I say that is every subject that we have here leads into the next, leads into the next and leads into the next. So if you're doing the six pack, You've got so much longer to wait until it leads into the next subject. But it's there designed solely for you. Then obviously you pay the full price as well. I mean, we'll do that. I'm so glad I don't have to do that. But it comes down to the fact that you can adapt your day-to-day -day life 
to be able to study the word of God. It doesn't bind you. It gives you the time period to spend with God. We run five weeks, then we're off. Sometimes two weeks, never more than two weeks, because then we just go back. Then we've got to start all over again. Now, we start off, we work five weeks, we have a break. We work another five weeks, we have a break. And so we go on with the subjects until in September, early November, September, we finish off, we get everything done, and then we go for a very lacquer graduation. This year, um, I don't think we're going to have a graduation in Woodbank, but I do believe that we're going to do something ourselves. We're going to do our own graduation. I'm, I'm believing that. I just need to run it past the authorities. But we'll do it. All right. Um, I hope he's not watching that moment. But anyway, <laughs> but that, that's just what we're going to do. So in this time period that you write there, you've got the test that you've got to do. After your third week, you write the test. Small little test, 10 questions or whatever it is, and very easy. Um, I'm not going to ask you to write an essay and mark your spelling. I would never have been here if they marked my spelling. All right. So you're going to write that little test in the middle of the, of, of the term or the, so the cycle. And in the end, you write an exam. And that exam is 50 questions. All right. Most of them are true and falses, um, as we call a monkey puzzle. I give you three answers or four answers. You must give me the right answer. I know the right answer. It's on the paper that I teach you with. <laughs> so, and that's the, the, the exam that you do. The assignment that you do is the reading book. You do the subject, um, let's take, uh, um, uh, what was it one? Power in the Blood. You get a totally different book. It's all about what you're learning, but it's not the same. It's a book totally on its own. That gets you to read and to do external, uh, um, what can we call it, in research, investigation, um, even go and pick your pastor's mind, that type of thing. And then you write on that, you write a, uh, um, a assignment. And in that assignment, there are, are a couple of basic questions. But in that assignment, which counts quite a lot of your marks as well, you write down an introduction. In the introduction, you tell me what you were expecting to learn. You tell me your heart. Then you tell me the information that I require out of that exam, out of, out of, out of that question that I've put to you out of that book. And then when you give me your conclusion, then you say to me, Doctor, I learned this, and I learned this, and I learned this, so that I can see your growth. You know, when we get to bigger classes, we've got, let's say, 30 students. I won't be able to see each and everyone's growth. But if you give me a piece of paper and you show me your growth, obviously it's going to make it better for me as well. All right. So all of those that I've spoken about now gives you 90%. All right. 10% is your attendance. You see how easy it's getting now. If you just show up, for every class, you've already got 10%. Cool, eh? All right. And then we go one step further. We're not satisfied with 10%. 10%. We're not satisfied with 100%. We want to give you more. Uh, how does that advert go? Watch the space. There's more. Hmm. We give you an extra 10% on a question that we give you that you write us an essay. The question will be something like, study Matthew's um, 28 verses 19 and 20 and tell me what you saw. And you write me an essay there. And out of that little essay that you write there, I find 10 marks. That gives you 110%. That makes it lacquer. I, I used to write those lacquer long ones so that I could make sure I get those, then I know I'll pass. <laughs> yeah, but that's it that's how our grading works and all that sort of stuff but guys there's a lot of rules and regulations we are a professional institute we are an international institute governed started planted by dr jerry savell in the states 
and Dr. John uh, Ben Dixon, Pastor Ben John, John Ben Dixon, more commonly known. He brought it out to South Africa and he got this thing rolling here as well. And we are responsible as lecturers, as deans, as a, whatever position you are in, to give him our best so that he can give his best to Dr. Jerry Savelle. And that's why we say we are a professional institute. And that is where the rules come from, that we have to have these. If you go to university, you can come and go as you please. But when it comes to the point when you need your points, your coming and going as you please will reflect in your marks because then they will be as you please. All right. So most importantly, attendance. In, 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 when you start as a student, you will get a, a student's manual. And in that student's manual, all these things are set out. So I'm not going to go through it all. But I'm going to touch on a couple of basics that come out of there. In there, they say you need an 80% attendance uh, register marked off. That gives you two nights that you don't have to be there. But ask any previous student, those two nights you lose because there's no time for the lecturer to go, okay, you weren't here, let's just recap. What about the rest of the class? So we have to carry on with that. So you've lost. Yes, we have got modern facilities of recordings and that sort of stuff. You have to ask the lecturer that is giving the subject if you are allowed to record. All right. I don't mind. They can record. They can do it. It's for their benefit. But you have to ask the lecturer for that as well. And the students, even though they're there 100% of the time, they record it because it helps them so much more when they start studying. All right. So that attendance, it's not advisable just to take two days here. But if you have to take a day, arrange with your lecturer, not with the administrator, not with me, not with your friend that told you to come here, with the lecturer that's giving that class so that he knows or she knows that there's somebody missing out of the class. And so doing, she can just build onto that as well. We, we do that. It's human to do such things. All right. Then obviously, um, we will give you a template on how to write the, exam, uh, the, the uh, assignment. There are rules and regulations. The first year, we cover and we help and we teach. And I can tell you within the first, second, the third assignment that you do, you start getting it right already. We also allow pen written ones, not pencil because that's easy changeable, but in pen, in ink. And we allow those, but as we grow into the time period as well, because of us becoming a professional that we are in there, we require it to go over onto a printed document because that document actually gets marked and, and we have been at a certain stage, we just get audited and then all of those have got to go in. So they are the available for auditing and that sort of stuff. But it's your assignment that you're giving us and we need to see the reflection of what you are learning. And that's why we start making these things professional because of first year, basic, second year, advanced, third year, life assignment life-giving, life-changing. Um, I can't talk more about third year. Fourth year is when you do your Bachelors of Honor in ministry. And that's a professional certificate, a uh, diploma, or whatever you want to call it, a piece of paper, it's professional. And you have then become a professional. And that's why we do this from the beginning. We, we cultivate a professionality in each and every one going through going forward. All right. And then obviously, when we get into the, uh, the next years and that sort of stuff, we've already got used to that process. So once you've done those, you get your points. And then every quarter, it's every quarter that we send out a, a, a report. Yeah. Every quarter, we send out a report, and you can physically see how you are doing. All right, so you get your marks, you, you get given your tests, your exam, and your assignment in the class. 
the test and the uh, uh, exam need to come back to the lecturer. They are not your property. Um, the main thing is they can run around and be used by others. But your assignment is yours. We just register that and we keep it there. And, and you know, as a matter of fact, I've, uh, I see quite a lot of the lecturers do it. They use their own documentation. I still use my first year's books with my lecturer's copies and I use my first year's books. There's so much more information that you can share and you can come and have a look at my books. Every year I write a little bit more in those books. That's how we learn. So the whole thing comes through the point is that we are professional. We keep these things in one and we go there. Once you've done that and you've got that mark, that subject is yours. Like my brother here, he done first, second, and third year a couple of years ago. He's now joining us to do his fourth year after two years, after three years. He's got his, he's joining us now to do his fourth year. It's going to be a little bit difficult. He's going to have to start getting that gray stuff running again, <laughs> get it a little, little bit liquefied, but he's going to do his fourth year. So that's how the degrees and the, and the diplomas and certificates work. Okay. As we've said, first year certificate, sec oh, no, I haven't said it, I'm going to say it now. First year is a certificate. Second year is your bi advanced Bible is also a certificate. Third year uh, is a diploma in, life in your life assignment. Fourth year is your bachelor's. Fifth year is the min uh, uh, master's in ministry. Also a very lack of time period because that's when you start doing your own thesis at home. And then your sixth year is your doctorate. No questions. <laughs> All right. You come to me and you ask me questions, but it's fine. So in, in that time period, you will learn. Your education is starting tonight. You will learn more. And I asked a person in this week, or no, last week, sorry, last week, I asked this person, have you ever sat in church and the pastor is giving a sermon as we say, in his book spot. Okay? And he's giving an awesome sermon. And you can stand up and say to him, Pastor, hang on. You people, go home. He's talking to me. Have you ever had that feeling? It starts here. When you hear, and, and he's talking about this, you start getting to that point of realizing, that I found that in the Bible. That, that's in the Bible. Because that's the education you get you. And you make it your own. And that's when it starts building up in you. When things get to that point, when you start realizing, Yo, we have an awesome God. We have a powerful God. We have a God that saw me coming. Huh? That's lacquer. And that's what it is all about. That is when you walk out of that class and you think, Yo, how am I going to write that exam? No, you walk out, bring it on. Bring that exam. I'm ready for it now. All right. And it's lack of being in class. The next thing. All right. I think I've said enough. I'm getting a bit hoarse. Your turn. <laughs> Pastor Duat said up top there when he's going to send this message out and all that. Tony Ami can talk in Afrikaans. He'll translate on, on the typing. No, <laughs> that's not the way it works. <laughs> oh, and just one quick thing as well. Yes. All our uh, material, everything is in English. All right, Afrikaans people, we help you. We do change into Afrikaans. Um, if I start talking a black language, you're not going to understand me, even if it is your language. I don't know what I'm saying. So I'm not going to go there. <laughs> All right, so that is how we go. We are open to every denomination. We are a Christ-centered institution. All right, thank you for your time. You guys at home there, thank you very much for your time. Um, you're going to get some of the information on how are the costs and all that sort of stuff. Let us know. Give us your email addresses so that we can start giving you all this information. Some people have already got the information so that we can start on the 15th. On the 15th or the first, second, third, fourth? Second year. On the 15th. The 16th is the first year. All you newcomers, it's for you guys on the 16th is your first class. 
we need to have all these paperwork done, settled and dusted at that, that time period. All right. So, Tony Ami is going to take over. She's going to tell you where and when it goes as well. She's also going to explain to you about the bank account. How do you pay? And that sort of stuff. There it goes in there. Once again, we are a non-profit organization. Remember it that way. We are here solely for the kingdom of God and the advancement of God's people. Thank you. Be blessed. And looking forward to seeing you guys in class. Cheers. Hello, everybody. Okay. Um, you all students will know how the money works and how the payments work. Okay, the new ones, there's a registration fee every year of 500 Rand. And that's payable before or on the first cycle of the class. So in this, um, it will be this end of February. But uh, for the COVID now, we're going to give the guys charge up to the end of March. And then the six pack, it's the half of the money for the course fees. That works out 2,720. That will be payable or uh, one, a once off that assure you of a 10% discount if you pay a once, once off. Otherwise, it will be an eight month, 340 rand a month, a month for from the end of February till the end of September. And the... Hmm? No, for the six pack. Okay, the 12 packs as well is a 500 rand registration fee. And the payment for that is 500, 5,440 with 680 per month from end of February till the end of September. Um, I know Derek said I'm going to kick him tonight for the six pack and the 12 pack, but it is me thinking as a woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's not possible, always possible for a woman to do a 12 pack. But yes, I did the 12 pack. And yes, I, all, I also would suggest to do the 12 pack. Um, I don't think I would have finished if I did the six pack. It's a lot of work. <laughs> but it's very interesting. And I've learned a lot. And it is what Eric said that um, sitting in church and Pastor Yamon's talking about something, I said, oh, I've learned that in righteousness. I've learned that in principle of prayer. So, yes, it is cool. Uh, doing your six pack, just remember your registration fee will be payable for two years. So, the first year for the first six pack, you will pay 500 Rand. For the second year, you will pay again 500 Rand. For the 12 pack, it's a once off 500 Rand. Okay, then the handbooks. Uh, on the first day of the cycle, I will be here and um, will uh, give you your, your books, uh, a list of the books. We're going to give you a lecturer's schedule for the whole year. If you are a six pack or a 12 pack, it doesn't matter, it's still be the same. And then the books is on there, but I'll give you the prices. And on the first day of the uh, cycle, I will tell you the prices and stuff. And you must tell me if you want to order a book. And as soon as you give me the POP, then I'll give you your book. Okay, we lost a lot of books. Not that's not been paid and all that stuff. So this is how it's working. If you can't afford a book, we've got a, a library that you can lend. I don't understand the borrow and the lend. Okay, you can lend a book uh, for a minimal fee, yeah. That um, because you must give the book back as well. You don't get your money back, but. Yeah, you must give the book back. But the books are expensive. Some, is, it's depending on the book, it's from 120, 50 to 350 Rand. But it's for keepsake. So most of the students do buy their books. Okay, is there anything else? No. 
I've got the new, the new um, banking account. We're still waiting for the new account. If you feel you want to pay your registration fee now, you can do it uh, in the old account, the standard bank account, your usual account with your student number. But the new students, uh, we're gonna ask you just wait for a bit. As soon as we've got the new account, uh, account, we'll give it through and then you can do the payments. Otherwise you can all wait for the end of February. But the classes is starting on the 15th of February. Thank you. <laughs> Not bad, eh? <laughs> Great stuff, thank you. That's my lovely wife. Um, also an honor to serve alongside with her. Um, we do have times, you can see how gray she is. Uh, I'm not gray, I'm servile. All right. <laughs> now, it's an honor serving with her because she's now got through her first year and she understands where we're also coming from as well. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go off live now. And then I'm going to ask you guys, the new students that are here, or guys that have know of new students with that are going to come and join us, stay behind, get to mingle with the old students, get to mingle with the lecturers. By the way, just put up the, your hands the new lecturers. You, you, you're the old one. No, <laughs> he, he, he's our president uh, lecturer. <laughs> but... These are the guys that are going to be teaching you. I'm one of them. Pastor Peter is one of them. Uh, Vernon, a new lecturer, a new lecturer, a, a has been lecturer, but still working again. And, and so we do it like that. That's how we go. Pastor Nelson as well. Welcome with us, Pastor. Sorry, I only noticed you now. Yo, that's bad of me. Eh? I say I remember a face, but it's the mask. Eh? <laughs> okay. So. We're going to go off in now, so stay behind with us. Enjoy the, the company of the rest of the guys. Get your documentation so that we can have it in. By the time that we start our classes and you've got your documents, we can start the class off. Normally that first evening, it's a bit of a drag and it gets a bit of monotonous. So let's get that done before we go in there as well. All right, and come and meet this beautiful face. Blessings, guys outside there. Thank you for coming in um, from, from the guys sitting on on the internet with us thank you let us know so that we can send you your paperwork so that we can get this thing going be blessed have a good evening almighty and gracious and glorious god we come in your presence to praise you to worship you and to glorify you for you're our king and you're our glory but lord you have brought us this far you have given us the necessary unctioning to be educated into your kingdom my lord and we ask holy father be with us, strengthen us, and give us the wisdom giver.